All right, hello everyone, and welcome back to the University Alliance Cup featuring Valorant. So the top 12 collegiate Valorant teams in the Philippines all competing to raise the Campus Torch, a prize pool of over 100,000 pesos, and the right to call themselves the best in the country. And of course, scholarships. We're going to be your casters for this next set of games. I'm Nausicaa, and I'm here with Dax. Dax, talk to us a bit about that game, the set of games we just had. You know, I, I'm really trying to think about my next magic act because from what we saw there for the clubs was just quite a show. Absolutely dominant, really picking up the pieces, showing their progress and doing an exceptional job against a team as renowned as the, the Warlocks. It really proves how effective Division B really is here in the University Alliance Cup. And this promotion relegation system puts everyone on their toes and gives them an opportunity to play against the best. So congratulations to the clubs, the Warlocks. As we said, they're not out of it as of yet. And they've gotten so many lessons from that game that they can build on after a bit of that self-reflection. Gotta say though, Nausicaa, one suit down, another to go. We got the other MGS squadron into play. We got the MGS Spades hailing from Division A versus NEU's Paradigm Esports. And this is an interesting, interesting matchup because Paradigm Esports, they... They've had basically a bit of an upset, if I remember correctly, in Division B. They beat the likes of the Harabons, which were featured in last year's UAC. So with that being said, they made it to the top two of their bracket. They showed up there and now they're facing off against an MG of Spades, who funny enough has a bit of the same story because if I remember correctly from my Division A experience is that they beat a certain team called Fearless Arcus. You know, you know, the defending champions. Not, not a big deal. No, no, big, no big deal, right? <laughs> and it just means that we have two basically underdogs looking to face off against each other who could be like, which team is going to clutch it out against the other one? We'll find out as we get into this best of three. Yeah, definitely going to be another interesting match and hoping, you know, of course, I'm hoping the sister team is cheering on the MGS Spades as they are going to be facing against paradigm esports in this best of three and like you said of course for those who are watching don't forget we still have a lot of games tomorrow you know whoever loses the games today it's not over just yet they still have a chance to make it uh, as they play off the games tomorrow um yeah same time mm -hmm. here on the same stream so we're gonna wait for the games to start in just a bit like you said it's gonna be an interesting match wondering who the first five are gonna be playing because i remember they do have i think around seven members uh, on this team and we are playing on an interesting patch we're playing live so yes, you know sir. a lot of there's a there's been a lot of changes since we last uh, saw each other here on uac since the previous season and even since the previous games because you know now we have the likes of astra and viper mm -hmm. changes and a couple of gun changes as well so really excited to see how you know these teams are going to adapt given this new patch we're in mm -hmm. Man, yeah, you, you know it already, Nausicaa, that the K is going to be interesting. Astra might be showing up as well. Bucky has been nerfed, but apparently the Collegiate scene has not gotten the memo from what we saw in that last series. And don't forget, guys, you can get your pick just type in exclamation point vote down below for it. And you can see it right now, there's a lot of support for the Spades squadron. But if you are cheering on for NEU, make your voice be heard, vote on down as well, and just pick your favorite teams. And I gotta say, between these two teams, it's also interesting because not only do they have similar storylines right now, but they also have a similar layout in their teams. Everyone and anyone in these two teams can really pop off and usually on the likes of the spades it's camellia right that you can watch out for but mm. it it's really just is quite a concerted effort for them i'd say neu similar case you got ice blue mink who is just crazy at getting those kills he's been hitting 30 bombs like it it's no tomorrow and overall, it, it's not just star power here. It, it feels like it's whoever can bring up that team average. Which of these guys will turn on and will turn it up to the next level? How many of these players will be playing at that level? Who will be able to win at the match out on who? Those are the questions needed to be answered because this feels like it's going to be such a fair and balanced battlefield unless one of these two teams can really take it and run away with it. Yeah, you know, there's really so many questions that are left to be answered for this match for this whole weekend. Actually, you know, especially when you're looking at, you know, tournaments like these where you have promotion tournaments, relegations and eliminations going on. And you see that, well, sort of upset that just happened, you know, in the previous game where we had a team from Division A, you know, lose to a team from Division B. It's like Hyron said, you know, 
these teams from Division B, you really can't count them out. You know, they definitely have the potential to make it, you know, to Division A as we move on uh, close to the next season, of course, after the playoffs are over. So there's definitely a lot of excitement. And I'm sure these players are hungry, you know, coming from Division B. They've worked so hard making it through all these different games uh, just to make it, you know, to this day to secure their spot on Division A. Yeah, it's just such a big effort, especially for Division B, right? You just go through a grueling bracket, you try and climb your way through it. But for the likes of Paradigm Esports, they've been on the upper side for quite a while. They've only dropped a single map in their whole run against the Harabons, and it was a very, very close effort on Ascent. Spades in meantime, overall a decent standing, I'd honestly say. They went 2-3. In their bracket, unfortunately, they're the ones in upper elevation right now because they lost the head-to-head -head versus FEO Tamara's FX. And that small little nuance, right? That's just a little bit that they couldn't make it happen then. But with a win, that where they're coming out from basically a high where they won out against Veritas Arcus, I wouldn't be surprised to see their A game yet again. This is quite a matchup though, and I'm really excited for this one. I, I look at it, I'm just like, you can throw a coin in the air and it will just land on one side and that's probably the side that's gonna win and that's just it it's a bit 50 50 coming into this one wouldn't be too surprised as well to notice a close game again because that's just been the storyline for these two teams always fight as close as they can always make sure that there is a brawl there is an action and it doesn't feel like they have that immediate star power compared to other teams that there are, there are a lot more identifiable players, that there are pro players playing at Collegiate as well. It's, no, it's really just the whole team playing it to the next level. And I wouldn't be surprised to see this contest go ping pong, ping pong, back and forth, back and forth, as we are going to be getting our maps in just a bit. Yeah, that's exactly what we want to, you know, we were, we've been looking forward to a lot of tournaments, you know, I'm sure, you know, for a lot of the Valorant uh, fans here as well in the chat, you guys have been keeping up with tournaments internationally as well. There's been a lot of upsets outside of our region too, if you guys have been hearing, so I'm sure it's going to be another exciting weekend for us, and in fact, an exciting month, because right after this promotion uh, tournament weekend, we're going to be moving on to the playoffs to find out which of our teams are going to be the champions of this season and as far as i've been seeing you know i haven't been uh, here for the beginning of this season but from what i've been seeing we're we're seeing a very different uh, result from the previous season uh, here at uac yeah you got some new titans showing on up the old guard still there but overall it feels like it's a more even battlefield all across the mm. board and as nausicaa has said this does feel like it's the the first slice of the upcoming playoffs because after this one guys then these teams that you see right now who win out these matches then it's gonna be like when uh, i don't know i i don't have a clock i don't have a calendar i don't even know why i'm looking at my wrist by this point <laughs> but all i know is they are gonna be showing up in season three to join the rest that are still up there so the six teams in the playoffs the two who have been eliminated by our, our in division a still and then the four teams we are gonna be getting for two after today and tomorrow with the clubs being one of them question is which one will be joining them for today will it be the spades or will it be paradigm esports the winner will get that slot the loser still has a chance tomorrow gonna get featured on stream versus the winner of the off stream match that's happening right now and it just seems like that we're getting such a great level of competition here because it means with a relegation and promotion system right that you have to be always on your toes and mm. right now not only am i gonna be on my toes i'm gonna be getting socks for it because icebox is our first map you don't see this too often but hey when have it any other way it's time now to see what spades and paradigm can do on a map like this uh this is gonna be exciting icebox really a contentious map if i would say so myself <laughs> for the past couple of months it's really been a hate love relationship probably more hate for a lot of yeah for the players you know especially uh, for those playing on your own unrated or competitive games icebox has been you know just really uh, a map of conflict for so many players and it's always interesting to see you know how different teams you know when you're actually a full a set of five and you know a collegiate team nonetheless you know we're seeing where or at least we will see how they're going to be playing out on this map you see if, of course especially in a map like this there's a lot of teams that have different kinds of play styles a lot of people for example like to play aggressively on this map and just keep pushing sides a lot of the time it's honestly chaos in this map uh it's gonna be a lot of uh fun i think to watch especially you know that we have a couple of new agents for example who are really rising up 
uh, on the quote unquote tier list, you know, with Astra on the map, you've got Viper as well, who's been really popular, especially on a map like this. Uh, I'm excited to see if someone will actually pick Viper up actually uh, in this game. Wouldn't be surprised at all, you yeah. know, that that decay hitting you with 50 and you can just even play a marshal on the other side go for the body shot and it's such a strong combo to work with and the map like this in ice box you want that viper to break those sidelines toxic screen so so strong at just giving you guys that kind of cover and you wouldn't have it any other way on a map like this besides that well i'm not gonna expect any kind of yoru honestly even <laughs> if you change the the agents it's still it's still yeah. a question mark and a half for the whole kit and this has so many I'd say pointless abilities coming into this one. Sure, you can play the mind games, but when your opponent really knows what's going on, then what else can you do? Astra can be played, but we've realized a little bit also that the pace of the Astra is a bit slower than everyone mm. else. Unless you have good combos with the Gravity Wells as well as the Nova Pulses, which is the Concuss, then it just isn't the work. You can always rely on a, something like an Omen, right? To go for the Paranoia, go for the Dark Covers, and keep it simple and clean. I also got a bit of a memo here, Nausicaa. So we have a map pool into play. Icebox will be map number one, and it is the pick of MU Spades. Now, this is interesting because with a map like this, you can actually go for Divide and Conquer on both sides, mm -hmm. on the attack, on the defense, try to find out who's going to be hot coming into this set. And I like this a lot because it allows the Spades to figure out so... So which one of you guys wants the star power banner today? Which one of you guys wants to pop off as much as you can? And that's really the biggest strength is when the spades figure out over a series, over a game, who to build around it. And you in the meantime, pick map number two, which is going to be bind. I've seen them had some great, great runs here. And when they can keep it simple on maps similar like, like bind, like haven, then that is when NEU really, really shines. For the side though, we are going to be getting into a set, which will be game number three. And that is the default as haven and split are banned. Not too surprised. Not too surprised at all to see Split Band after an incredible performance by NEU on a map like that. When you have the killjoy of which one of those players? One of the players that are just so, so strong, really, when they decide to whip it out. And that's really just it. When you have a great Sentinel in you and the likes of Takashi, then he he is just going to be so potent in a map like Split. That's why you take it away. But one more facet I've noticed about NEU here, Nausicaa, is they do have a bit of a tendency to swap roles from time to time so not only do we get a game of musical chairs on who's hot for any of you it's a game of musical chairs of what who's playing what who's playing what yeah and that's gonna be exciting right because now that you have for example agents like viper who might actually be viable especially maps like this now it's gonna really be you know confusing maybe for some of the teams to read what kind of team compositions they're gonna be playing into because maybe before uh, and i was actually looking at the for example a couple of the team comps that uh, mu or mgs space was playing you know there was a lot of omen sova reina jet killjoy you know kind of a standard team composition double duelist you've been seeing before but now that viper's here for example who are they going to replace for example do you give up a duelist you know do you give up you know other agents on the team composition to make way for that viper it's going to be exciting to see how they make those different adjustments and what kind of maybe new team compositions we'll be seeing uh maybe even across the different maps because you know viper for example definitely see her a lot on icebox and bind maybe not as much on other maps for example like even or split but still an option so exciting to see uh yeah what kind of adjustments they'll make yeah, I, I cannot wait myself. And that's the thing about the collegiate scene, right? Keep that core composition as simple and as refined as possible. It isn't up to you guys to really innovate, but if you do and you know how to play it right, then it is a big game changer. But more often than not, if you play that double duelist, you play a sentinel, a utility, and a whatever, it's a smoke right along the way, then you're good to go. And that's really been the setup for Division B so far. It's whoever can outmuscle the other with their refinement. We saw the clubs do it a while ago, even against the Warlocks from Division A. So it just goes to show that that kind of progress, that kind of that kind of way to really look about things is really answer here for the University Alliance Cup. Be the best team you are first before you decide to, to play something funky. Because it's such a different standard, right? And you're not only playing into the meta or playing into something you're comfortable with, compared to some playing something new and having to play at that same level mm. it is a big ask for our collegiate teams for our university teams and it just goes to show that 
this is only a step in the right direction. This is only a path to become the best kind of player you are. And I'm just so happy that the University Alliance Cup really exists to allow these talents to be fostered, to be nurtured, and to get even better. So good job back at the arena. You know, get big shout outs to where we are right now. <laughs> yeah, I mean, especially looking, for example, at, you know, players from the previous season who were eventually picked up you know, by pro-am teams, you know, looking for talented players on platforms like this, you know, it's really looking at the long run. You know, when players enter tournaments like this, you know, here at UAC, it's not just about, you know, collegiate esports because a lot of these players, you know, could probably get scouted, you know, by professional teams out there who are looking for, you know, new talent uh, to really keep up with, you know, the meta and keep up with uh, Valorant as a competitive scene because really Valorant is quite young. Still, as a game, even though it felt like uh, it's been here for quite a while, it's a very young game. Uh, there's just so much growth, I think, that the game is still going to have over the next couple of years. So I'm sure a lot of teams, you know, professional teams, whether existing or about to be formed, these are one of the platforms where they're looking, you know, for possible new talent. So definitely something for all the participants here at UAC, uh, whether currently in UAC or if you're a student right now watching this stream who's interested, you know, in joining the UAC, this is definitely a platform that could really be a leverage for you, you know, as you look into a career in esports, especially as a professional player. I mean, come on, let, let's just be real here, guys. We're doing a div uh, promotion relegation system, and the prize is a season three slot. So mm -hmm. it's basically confirmation that this is happening again, <laughs> that you should be preparing. And if, if your school isn't in it, I don't personally know the process, but with Division B happening, it does feel like it's a lot easier for um, some of these mm. other clubs, other, other universities to really get into it. Then, hey, just make a team and prepare to face off against the other collegiate teams that are trying to vie for that position. Besides that, then you are just good to go. Keep on grinding, keep on getting better. And I don't, I don't know why Nausicaa is trying to imply scouting or anything. I don't know if there's anyone here who who watches out for up and comers. Don't don't look at me for that one, guys. But hey, this this has just been quite a set so far. I, I know that you were able to catch a little bit of Spade's sister team a while ago, the clubs, and that series just was absolute dominance and it went 2-0. What do you think? Do you think the series is going to be a lot closer than the first one? Or do you think either one of these two teams can just run away with it? I'm really hoping it's a lot closer, you know, because looking at the games from earlier, uh, like you said, you know, it was definitely uh, quite dominant, you know, from our team from Division B. And uh, like we say, you know, you want to say you're surprised because maybe you think in terms of Division A, Division B. But honestly, you know, Division B, like Hyron again, and you were saying earlier, it's really that division has actually given them you know a kind of a place to really flesh out their skills and to polish their team play and prepare them for today actually which is the tournament and that dominance you know i'm sure that gives a lot of the division b teams hope so honestly you know looking at our division b team here right now you know they're probably feeling pumped because they just saw their fellow division b team uh, kind of dominate uh, to secure themselves a slot for uh, division a in the next season so let's hope it's a closer match uh, this time around, I do think that either of these teams can still make it. You definitely can't count out, you know, our bottom four teams from Division A uh, because they were exposed to kind of the top tier talent, you know, from that division. You know, you had USC, uh, of course, you also had Adenae and LaSalle who have just been consistently performing even with losing a couple of players, for example, from the previous season. So there's definitely a lot to look forward to uh, in this match. Yeah, that's so true. And it doesn't matter where you come from, guys. It's about how you play on the day. And see, you can really see that it's not just because you come from Division of A that you're a favorite. You're here for a reason. You are here to be tested. And on both sides, it's up to them to show their progress. Contention into the league. That's pretty much the way to go here for the University Alliance Cup. I wouldn't have it any other way. Just keep everyone on their toes to make sure that there aren't really teams just coasting on whatever entity they're from, whatever kind of re reputation they have, what, how old their org is, you know, those kind of things. Because even pioneers can get removed mm. if they cannot play it that. So you can see, you can see that. You can see, no, no, I know Nausicaa knows. I know Nausicaa knows. <laughs> I know Hyron also knows. These, they were both making the statements just like, I know what you guys are talking about. They're there. Let's, let's see if they can make it happen. You know, that, that's, that's always a possibility. And it was funny because because we had hired a while ago, we have Nausicaa now. Uh, I'm like the I'm like the guy in the middle, right? But <laughs> from what I remember back in the day, these guys used to work a bit together, like a few yeah. years back, right? Yeah, and the the other game that we're we're featuring right now. So it's like, hi, hi, fellow workmate. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> so it was it was just like 
I'm just like the new hire looking around. It's like, oh, okay, I'm just going to be here. I'm just going to smile and wave, smile and wave. It, it was pretty funny, actually. And that's the thing, right? Sometimes you just end up seeing people casting with them again after so long. And then you're just, just like, okay, hello, sure, bye, cool. Sounds good. Yeah, I mean, that's uh, the great thing too, right? About this uh, tournament, I guess, in general, UAC. It's like, I think we were talking with Ferzerk, for example, a couple of months ago. And it's always crazy to us because, um, you know, Hyron, for example, and Ferzerk and a couple of the other people here in UAC who kind of go way back into the mm -hmm. previous uh, years even. It's it's really just, esports has really progressed uh, since we started way back. And now here we are just about to start our second match of the day here between MGS Spades and Paradigm Esports. Going to take a look at what agents they're going to go for. Seeing some hovering over Viper. Finally, I was really looking forward to seeing some in the previous match. Uh, maybe we'll get to see it this time around. Again, we are here on Icebox. Uh, which was the map that was selected here uh, by our team. So let's see what kind of compositions they go for. Yeah, here we have it. It's going to be MU's pick, and we'll see what the Spades can bring out on the defense. Paradigm going to be on the attacking side. And just, you know, to wrap up the, the points of our podcast there, this is going to be <laughs> quite a contentious matchup between the Spades and the Paradigm Esports Squadron. I wouldn't have it any other way. On the casting side, uh, much love, really, to all the casters we've been seeing so far for the past few weeks, not only in the Division A side, but also give props to the Division B people who have been working hard. You can really see that they're trying to come up ahead of the curve, trying to be the best kind of casters that they can be. And we're just happy that they're able to tell the stories Choose of the teams agent. that we're seeing right now. But here we have it. Spades on the defense, Paradigm on the attack, like I have mentioned. And Viper finally locked in here by Paradigm Esports. Gonna get that Killjoy as well. And V-Time Brimstone here for the Spades. And Icebox is gonna be the map of choice. Look at how big it is. Look how wide you can see those sight lines and what kind of utility what kind of extra flavor will these two teams bring to the table spades trying to prevent themselves from that emotion beat time and eu looking to find that paradigm ship indeed with paradigm esports and looking to join the clubs as well as division b style awards to move on to next season but before we get into this one nausicaa just real quick i want to give props yet again to our incredible incredible sponsor quick shout outs to our amazing partners at logitech g if you're looking to supercharge your gaming setup so you can hashtag keep playing check out logitech's amazing gaming gear at logitech.akadarena.com or type exclamation point logitech g in the chat thank you thank you to all our partners so far you know you got globe telecom we got logitech as we mentioned riot games switch student comeback 2.0 by the meta and valorant ph let's get into the matchup though let's get into the game and what do you think about these compositions that we're seeing right now yeah this is going to be an interesting match some people might be surprised we're seeing the brimstone actually but kumaleo has actually picked him i believe three times uh, over the course of the group stage, of course, before they went into this promotion tournament. So he played Omen, I think, twice out of the five, but Brimstone seems to be uh, this guy's preferred smoke agent. So we're going to see how that plays out here on a map like Icebox. And of course, can't ignore the Viper being played here by Paradigm Esports. It's going to be interesting to see the lineups uh, that they were going to be setting up, but they will be starting on attack here. And it looks like they are posturing for a possible A push. We just got a short pause here. Gonna fix a couple of the kinks here and there, maybe some technical things going on, but uh, yeah, let's see what kind of approach they will go for here on this first round of the match. You know, I'm I'm just gonna be really agnostic. I have been I've been traumatized by so many technical <laughs> issues recently over the past few casts, but I'm I, I'm just numb to it by this point. Just you know, you expect it already from the the Philippine side. It is what it is. But then again, it's just like okay, here we go again. Thing is though, we want to make this is the point I always make to people. We want to make sure that our players are prepared and can play to the best level that they can play mm. because it's very difficult to do anything as a land very difficult to all come together as one with the whole situation going on and the fact of the matter is it's already good to see all of the esports going on through we see the players still ready to play with their own kind of setups and it is quite an investment just to make sure that everything is a okay so we'll give them that time we'll make sure everything is prepared and while we have this pause i do want to talk about these comms real quick so the brimstone as you mentioned for the spades gonna be into play and you have people who like the brimstone better not just because that the smokes go very very quickly can execute on the site immediately right but also mm. it's it's those 
a line of gods. You know how to use incendiary. You know how to use the orbital strike. You can zone out the competition similar to a sentinel at any given time. Sage also gonna be in the play here for the spades. A strong pick on a map like this. Wall out whatever you need for those default plants. But in the meantime, for NEU, you got that Viper in the play. You got that Sage as well. But you're only playing a single duelist overall. For the side of spades, it's two. For NEU, for Paradigm, it's one. And it's all eyes on Ice Blue Mink. Uh, I'm not sure if he's like the newest addition to the Paradigm Esports roster, but he's already made ways with frequent, frequent 20 plus kills games. 30 bombs even do show on up. And if you can thrust one guy on your roster to play the Duelist in that capacity, it has to be Ice Blue Mink. Yeah, this is guy. Uh, this guy's definitely one of the players to watch out for on this team. You know, and I think a lot of people also uh, give importance to Jets and Opera, specifically on Icebox. You know, you've got a lot of these long angles, especially on A, for example, uh, whether you're on attacking uh, or the defending side. So going to be exciting to see how Ice Blue Mink performs on this uh, game. Definitely want to watch out for, like you said, of course, alongside Takashi. Uh, on their team and here we go we're gonna actually be starting looks like a dart will be shot here over at mid but we are a bit split up here sage just Can guarding the flank here on the attacker side while the rest of the members seem to be moving over towards a bit of an early wall actually here as well from the defending sage and there we go dart though bouncing on around and here comes the side of paradigm esports we'll see what kind of dimension will we get will it be the dimension or any you wins will be the dimension that the spades win instead. We'll find out in this best of three goes though over onto the high ground. We got a Yonix into the roster coming into this one. He is gonna be backing on our way for the time being. There's the Molly lineup into play from Camellia as well. Spike though planted and the walls are in the way. Seems like though for Paradigm Esports, they got the job done. They're gonna go for the plant and move on back to play post plant. Yeah, here we go. We saw the Viper doing the work there, putting up the wall near screens just to make sure everyone's safe. But TG getting a pick here. Both stages actually one for one. It's a 4v4 now. TG really pushing up, but he gets taken out here by the Killjoy. And all of a sudden, defenders here are going to be the ones to win as they were able to effectively push out the attackers there. Exactly, and when you play that post plant, you still need to have that staying power into the front line. If you get fended off and you have to back on the way behind the pipes and behind that cover, then it will just be an easy, easy, easy defuse for the defense to do it. And honestly, from the default place you can play on the Sage, the counter action to many of those is to just stick the defuse and that's the thing about a map like this if you cannot hold your ground you are just going to be watching your life still be there but the life of the spike isn't so neu down by one the spades taking command of the lead here we go again with a bit of the lineup and just goes to show like from what the spades have been doing so far they have a rich understanding of the map the recon bolts are on point we've seen the molly being thrown over to the nest as well and the walls also into play overall it seems like there's a lot of research right now courtesy of the spades and Paradigm Esports trying to take a new page to the collegiate scene, taking a page from the pro scene and playing a single duelist comp that's been a lot more popular right now in the Philippine locals and trying to take their own spin as we get into the next round. Calling my bot. Yeah, I think we actually saw Jet from Paradigm Esports here forced by a Spectre here on second round. Let's see if you can make good use of that. Oh, could be wrong. I might have sold it actually, but we see them walking up here now on A. The defense here, spades are quite spread out. And no one spotted. The arena hasn't spotted anyone just yet. There is the dart taken out quickly. There goes the screens as well here from the Viper as the members move in. Ice Blue Mink looking for a kill here. Might get scouted by the dart, but they're able to take that one out as well. A couple of members were spotted out by the Sova. There goes the ball, and they are going to go in waiting for the plant. But the wall's taken down quickly. Goes, gets one kill. Goes for the dismiss here as he backs off, waiting for his team to go and catch up here. Aeonix here on the Viper, gonna try and go for the plant once again, but the attackers and defenders here, each of them getting their kills. Defenders, 2v1, there's only Viper left now. Aeonix, what's he gonna do? Get some Spectre, but not gonna be enough as Mapui University here, the MGS Spades, able to take this one. Yeah, and with Aeonix into the roster, this means that the Kashi is gonna be out of this action, out of this map for now. We can never count out a player like that. You can see how lethal the Viper can really be. And I, I'm expecting a lot of things actually here from Aeonix coming at this one. His setup on this Viper is going to be instrumental to the mm. success of an EU. Because if you're only going to be playing the Viper and you're going to be running that double duelist, you have one big wall to get in the way, yes. And you have one standard smoke that you can get back at any point in time. There are a few teams in the scene that 
try to experiment with a double control setup where you play the Viper alongside something like the Omen or the Brimstone. But you can make do with a Jet Shirt. You can go for the Cloudburst in the same way, the same vein. And with that decay in the way, then you already know if Paradigm Esports gets the setup and have the guns in coming into a round like this, then it will be so difficult for the Spades to figure something out as Zeroner. Apparently, he has taken a bit of a page of some pro scene playbooks, makes it rain onto the orb, doesn't hit anyone, as Paradigm Esports playing it slow and steady instead. Yeah, slow and steady indeed. We see them splitting up to pushing up B. So the bomb is here uh, on A nearby their Sova. Not much information gathered yet on either side. As we see Ice Blue Mink just trying to peek here, see if anyone is on A site. So I believe Ghost is hanging up there. Uh, just close to heaven. Slowly now moving on to A site once again. Paradigm Esports putting down the screens. There's the Viper. Here we go. This is trial number two of this setup. We'll see where the wall is placed this time. But the plant is going down. There's the wall placed there nearby screens. Let's see how this works out. Yeah, just gonna be looking for the play here. And Chi Chi, Chi C, can he actually figure out the kill for now? Ice Blue making me time behind the wall. The parry orb just allowing these guys to, at the very least, play slow and steady. Goes in the meantime over on the high ground. We got TG here trying to figure something out. And there we go. There's a wall in the way going for defuse already. But Ice Blue Mink has other plans. A great understanding there to get the wall back to get the kill. And that's going to be two in a row for the Jets so far. So difficult for the space though to try and stick it coming into this one. And they're just walking into sidelines here. Nausicaa. Paradigm Esports. They were prepared. They were ready. And they played that poison to the best level. God, that, that wall of that Sage was just like a firing range of target basically for Paradigm Esports there. To shoot down as they're able to secure their first round here uh, in this match so far and it looks like uh, looking at the buys they still will be able to pick up a couple of rifles here on defense uh, but not everyone of course will be able to pick that one up good attack there they were able to finally pull off the a push let's see how they adjust as we're going to get a short pause here uh, just again to check to make sure everything is smoothed out for the next round you know, that's the power of playing the Viper like this. It's just that extra immediate 50 damage that sure you can get back if you go away from that decay state. But then again, if you're going to be looking for to stick it and the wall isn't fortified to the maximum, firepower is just way too much there for Paradigm Esports mm. and the power of Ice Blooming really showing up there to get the kills anyway. Now, MG of Spades, it has been a few costly rounds here, there, and everywhere. And interesting enough, they are going to be going for the buys coming into this one. They want to go for their own kind of comeback. They want to try and keep this lead alive against Paradigm Esports but preparations for any you are a go and I love it because it really proves how much these two teams have studied the map like this I know Icebox isn't too new anymore and you're gonna be, you've seen it a lot in the ladder already but when you whip out something a bit different on a map like this when you whip out something a bit different from the standard that you see in the University Alliance Cup you better have the hard work and dedication to really refine your play and so far so good for both teams Definitely, it's looking exciting, and uh, I think our predictions earlier were right. It seems like it might actually be a closer game this time. That's uh, exciting to see uh, both MGS Spades and Paradigm Esports kind of going toe to toe so far. Uh, like you said, on this new-ish map uh, in Icebox, uh, and we are just keeping things, uh, checking things uh, with our two teams here before we move on to the round. Uh, but so far, you know, MGS Spades they've been uh, spreading out with the same. Kind of set up so far as the round is about to begin. Ghost always up here uh, on A Heaven. Get out of my way. Uh, out on B. There goes the Dark here on the A once again. Bit of utility used there, but looks like it might actually be a B push this time as Aeonix with the bomb is peeking here towards B. Yeah, Spike looking on the round thing is though a bit dangerous for the side of Paradigm Esports because they're exposing the Spike's location very, very quickly there. Luckily enough, the Spades did not peak that angle, didn't get that kind of intel, and they will be backing you on away run. instead to reinforce a side. So the mind games do work a little bit better here for Paradigm Esports. Oh, not oh. only that, they're heavy on the commitment. They're trying to blow your mind here, Nausicaa, with oh, that mind free kind of statement. But Lockdown can be into play. Viper Spit now here, Fire and play. suddenly, surprise surprise it's paradigm changing the cards changing the dimension and changing it up to go to b site oh man mgs spades ate that one up and it was a nice change of pace there coming in from paradigm esports but the question is can they hold here on this post plan situation we've got the viper here 
gonna display Viper's strength hopefully here for Paradigm Esports. But Mapua slowly moving in here from Snowman area. Malaya putting down the Molly as well, but they can't see a thing. This Viper Pit again just in post match situation is no good. We see Zirinir actually jumping, but he's taken out quickly. And the defense, oh, actually, the defense is actually doing pretty well here. They go for the defuse. Can they stick it out? There's only one member left from Paradigm Esports with oh, a shield. Oh. That's huge. Oh. That was huge from GC. That was absolutely. Positively, oh the most clutch kill he could do, and he whipped out the sheriff just to get the shot. That was as close as can be. And TG, the thing was, he had only had one HP because of the the, the babe. But the, eventually, man, the souffle it does oh arise on back down. But oh my God, TC, he knew he had to go for the sage. I was just, I got tongue twisted just from how incredible that was from the Sova and GC. Man, oh man, that's a step in the right direction there for Paradigm Esports. I like the Viper Spit, but I love the response from Spades even better because they just went in. Sirener, just a mad lad indeed, who is now dead because of Ice Blue Mink. But he went close against the Viper, and that's the best thing you can do inside the Viper Spit. If you're too far away, the Viper can see you, and you cannot. If you're just right beside her, then you can shoot down the Green Agent. But Ionic's gonna get on the board, and with that kind of clutch, Paradigm Esports can now rebuild and retune themselves to go for another take. Koi's JM fighting against Camellia right now, who has to back on away. The Empress is available, sure, here for the Reina, and Sirius has already unleashed the Blades, but this is just Paradigm, feeling it like crazy. Koi's JM with the kill on Camellia, goes to from above with a kill onto Aeonix, but such a difficult endeavor right now here. Nausicaa and the Spades, they're running oh, out of this deck of cards. They're running out, indeed, of people to play with. It's all eyes on Sirius now. Oh man, one Spike HP planted. and a couple of dives. Can he do something here? Oh, he is gonna go down. That's GC again with a the kill there. But man, Mapua University there, MGS space must be pretty shaken from what just happened there. It felt like there wasn't enough time to process that round we just had there uh, with a the kill being secured, of course, by GC with that Sheriff. And now let's see what kind of, uh, or how that's gonna actually play out because we saw the huge commitment there uh, on A earlier, so the mind games coming through. And for a second, I thought MGM Space is actually going to be able to go for the retake. Uh, but now we see Paradigm Esports, our team from Division B, with the lead. Uh, just one round lead so far, so definitely can't count Standing out Space just yet. But I'm sure that that makes the team, uh, gives them a bit of that morale as we move on in this round. This is this is the match, guys. This is already off to such a great start. And you can see it's just inch by inch right now between these two teams. But Shinobi doesn't need any kind of high ground to force his with him. And he does get the kill on 2-1. Now, NEU can force out whichever side they want to take. But the thing is, if they do give up that corpse, that will be a Sage going for the res. Now, I like this a lot from Paradigm Esports. They're going over to A side, trying to bait out whatever the Spades wants to do. And interesting enough, the MGS Spades do not go for the res instead. They are already looking to reinforce on the A side. Try to stop this kind of push. Ice Blue Mink though, spotting out. Goes tagging him to allow Cheesy to get that kill with the Hunter's Fury. And Teamwork making a dream work so far here for Paradigm Esports. Wall is up. Shinobi putting the plant down. And things are solid so far here for the attacking side. Yeah, the early picks here coming from Paradigm Esports are doing so much work, honestly, in helping them to secure these rounds. The wall is up. Gonna be taken down here a bit by TG. Try and maybe get a couple of picks so they can safely defuse here. The op being used there. Oh, Ice Blue Mink gonna get one. Looking for another here on the stage. It's a 2v2 2v2 actually. And so many kills there. Taken by TG. He's gonna look for the res here. Oh, but Sirius able to take out JM there. And that is gonna be around going over to MGS Spades. Yeah, not too bad on the res though. TG bringing one back just in case. Now helping out themselves on the economy as well as they finally get a round back on the board. And 3-3 three to three is the scoreline. Gotta commend TG though with that patience to go for the res over onto A site rather than catching what the one out all the way across the map. It does seem like that they had a handle of it anyway. Serious though with the operator making some noise. And that when in doubt, just rely on the Sage to play Battle Sage instead and get those kills. Now, NEU, again, good plan, but just being out clutched there by their opponent. This match 
is going to be defined by two things, Nausicaa. One, that set up to play that plant and then how you're going to be playing that post plant. But two, is really hitting the shots, going for the clutches, and it really can be anyone's game coming into this one. Serious though, looking very serious on Overwatch 2. The Aeonix though in the meantime with the kill on the TG. This might be the operator getting one back. No, Cheesy back on a wait, turning into a pile of goo after seeing the sights of that operator. But he's still alive. Koi's JM. Why are we playing it close as Camellio decides to throw for the volley? Doesn't burn down the ice here, but he's going to be the one extinguished by Shinobi instead. Yeah, seeing that up there on A and then getting that pick on B was pretty much the ghost signal here uh, for Paradigm Esports to move up. But actually, JM is going for the flank. He gets taken out though by Zirinir, but the bomb's already been planted. And the wall is up as well. Comes in screen, as well as the Viper's Pit being used here. Ghost though, able to get a pick. Now slowly going to try and go for the retake here. Aeonix though here in the Viper's pit to try and hold it. Ice Lumik though going for that flank. I think from mid. Not sure where he came from, but he gets the kills. He makes it work. And that is gonna be four to three here. Again, the lead just back and forth here between these two teams, but so far, Paradigm Esports able to get their round. Hey, Ice Blooming says it's not about the destination, it's about the journey. And the journey <laughs> to play the flank over onto the crates there over by Orange. That's, that's just pretty much the way to go. Getting kills very, very quickly. Ice Blooming has to be one of the most mechanically superior players coming into Division B and really just the star of the show in hitting the shots for NEU. Gives him that lead and here we go again into another yeah, round. Yeah. Now, FGS Fades, I do believe though that this time they're going to be throwing a bit of a bad hand because they only have the sheriffs but who knows how the cards will turn as we are going to be getting it at it against shinobi in the meantime inside the garage we'll see though if this is going to be the revenge of the spades as ice blooming has already caught at serious no counting for you that's gonna be a takedown from the jet in the meantime Zirener, he's been Honestly, he's been... It's been interesting for Zero Nerd because he is a man who is just not afraid whatsoever to go for the pushes right. But unfortunately, it hasn't led to some kills. She's in the meantime with a kill off the wall. But TG, perfect patience for Slayonix. Gets a gun. Can he get a second kill? That's the question. No peek though from the Sova as of yet. Waiting for reinforcements. Waiting for a little bit more of that intel. And now it's Ghost getting on the board as TG has gone down. 1v3. All eyes on the Reyna. All right, let's see what Ghost can do here maybe. Try and put some damage on to Paradigm Esports Economy. As he moves up tube here, let's see what he can do. Thought we were going to see TG go for the clutch again there with that Battle Sage. But unfortunately, he was taken out a bit early. JM though, Ooh, finds him looking away. That is going to be another round going to Paradigm Esports. Paradigm Esports, another one on the board. And this is when they can try to pull away from their opponent. Still got to be careful though, because the spades, they can come back at any points at any given time. And these two teams have a tendency to make games as close as possible. Overall, the score is though pretty even on both sides. And it has been the assist day here from Zirinner. Hasn't really been able to get the kills, but like I said before, his playstyle of Reckless Abandon after going for the darts has been has been actually helpful here for the side of MGS Fates. He plays a, a weird kind of first contact, even though it's a little bit in behind of the duelist. It just does help him out with the tag in the bags. And I feel like if he does get the kills coming into the next few rounds, it will give the spades back the edge that they need. She's in the meantime, though, over to the high ground, but Ghost has other plans. And he does turn his opponent into a Spectre with that Vandal. Now then, he's up top the nest, and as soon as that happens, Paradigm Esports, they're trying to rethink what they have to do you here, Nausicaa. They go for the res, and they might try to go for oh. it again, and yes, Ice Blue Mink finding that target, answering one back, and it's advantage here for NEU instead. All right, let's see what they're going to do there. It's a bit of a flank here coming from Sirius, but they spotted him. Ooh, gets chipped actually with pretty much one HP, so he is going to be backing off there, and it seems like they are going to commit onto this A push. There goes the lockdown from the killjoy as they slowly move onto site. Aeonix able to take out Kumileo there. It's Zirinir here, left alone on the site as the rest of the members, two of them, going to try and catch up. The Dane is going to go there, but no one was caught by that, thankfully. Now it's going to be about the retake. A billion walls here, uh, fortified by the spades, and now we see if they can go for the retake. Oh. TG right, taken down. There's only two members left here from MGS Spades. 
And as soon as this happens, it seems like Paradigm Esports just has such yeah. a good handle so far. With this kind of numbers discrepancy, they're not even bothering to hang on in the other side of A anymore. They're going for the push oh, instead. But Zero in there, he has gotten a kill. Tries to peek into the corner, but doesn't expect someone there on the other side. Instead, Sirius in the meantime, with two so far. It's 2v1. And Paradigm Esports and their eagerness might be biting them in what coming into this one. Sure, it will be them winning out the round. But did they need to lose everyone else there? That is the big question coming into that one. Any you though will take the win anyway, 6-3, and are trying to run away with quite a lead. Yeah, looking like the economy is still pretty healthy, I guess, for especially for a couple of members. Aeonix has got 8k in the bank and is just really top fragging uh, alongside Ice Blue Mink, of course, on the team. So far, it's a pretty sizable lead here uh, for Paradigm Esports up against MGS Spades. So, of course, for those who are just tuning in, this is a best of three. So even though one team wins this round, we still do have possible two more games to go. Let's see what the approach is going to be here from NEU. Looks like they are going to be just keeping the bomb here at spawn. Going to play for a couple of picks maybe here on B. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens indeed as TG now with a wall on up. Pretty early into the fight because it's going to be Spades right now trying to play the offensive instead on their defense. And you can see that Ghost trying to get that attention to allow Sirius to get to so far. Danger close with the Phantom. Right now, he has gotten the kills that they need, but it's not enough. It's 3v3. Spike has been dropped Spike though. Dropped. But the thing is, Ice Woman gives it to the Viper instead. Watches to watch the flank as here comes TG. Having some thoughts to try and save his teammates with a potential res if he does get the kills. Overall though, the Spades have gotten in position and this time Paradise Time, we'll be looking to commit onto a site. All right, the screens are up as well. Right here. We see the alt actually going through there from Spike the MGS space. Just give themselves a bit of space. The bomb was actually dropped there, and now it's a three v two. This could be MGS space time to make a comeback. He's not standing. able to land that one. He doesn't see Zero near. They're on the corner, so he is going to be left. taken out. Now it's only Ice Blooming coming all the way from mid. We do see the Sage. I think TG is watching that angle. Let's see who wins this duel. Watch it out. Ooh, gets one tap there. That is going to be finally a round going over to the Spades. And a great read there by the Spades. For Paradigm Esports, sure, they got the kills to even up the odds and it got a little bit dicey. But the way the Spades positioned themselves as soon as they got that kind of intel that NEU was going to be playing on a site was just so, so stellar. They had every little bit of the angles they needed. TG also realizing that someone might be watching this flank, didn't need to force anything out for the res. And he was in position in the middle instead to catch out Ice Blooming. And that was the show. Just it really is a bit telling though. That's that's one thing with the newer controllers that we get between the Astra and the Viper per se. Where it's a lot more readable to see where your team is going for because you still need to set up the things first compared to the Brimstone and the Omen where you just unleash the smokes and then you go for the push. That little bit of extra intel that the Spades was able to work with really did its job to allow them to get good positions. And now NEU will see how quickly they can go as they're moving over to B site, but might meet the Sage on the other side. Oh, here we go, Aeonix again peeking here on B. It's, it's such a huge risk, honestly, that he's carrying the bomb and peeking this angle at the same time, but this guy just is no fear. Slowly, the wall was put up there on the left side, but they can here. still pass here. Dark thrown out, a couple of shots as well, but no damage taken just yet. They're gonna be slow here as well. Ultimate ore, but not enough just yet to get the Viper spit. A couple of way. shots being thrown out. TG gets one, he's gonna have to run away here. Knives thrown out, but TG gets three. Is he gonna get a fourth? No, he does not. He goes down, but he did the work for the team. Now there's only two left here on the side of NEU. And man, this is gonna be a difficult round. Man, this is going to be a bit difficult indeed, but here we go with the Brawl and Ghost going to get that takedown. Now, as we have Aeonix the only left with 30 HB, uh, I'll take this chance, I'll get take this time to maybe say that the day, it, it feels like it's TG's day. You know, as I said about the spades, this, this deck of cards can tell a lot of different fortunes, and for them, it's just who is popping off. Besides him, it has to be serious as well, and these guys right now, alongside the whole team, have been completely on point. But with 12 and 10 respectively, you got to give them the respect that they deserve because they're at it. They're at their A game and they can get only even better from this point onwards. Yeah, the attack has been uh, pretty good so far from NEU. But man, when the going gets tough, uh, uh, according to chat here, you can definitely count on 3G to get you those <laughs> three kills at least in a round. And just really been 
uh, the name of the defense so far. Let's see if that's going to be the case here uh, as we move on into the next half. We're going to get a peek here on B again. Actually, I do make aggressively pushing forward. He's going to place that wall right before backing off Dark use as well. But might not catch anyone. There goes the Viper wall once again. And they know this is going to be a commitment here as the Viper spit is put down. No one taken out just yet. And slowly the members here of MGS Spades walk up to the site. The bomb hasn't been planted yet either. Let's see if they can get a couple of picks. And that intel. Just a little bit of intel there. I love the fact that Aeonix did back on away just in case. But Zerinder, Ooh. he threw it Five again, times. but it doesn't work out. I tell you, man. He is just he's just like, okay, I'm gonna go for this Viper. I know someone is right beside me. But Ice Blue Mink playing bodyguard, playing such incredible bouncer play style, and he is just protecting the team as much as possible. Serious so though on the board. Shinobi and Ice Blue Mink already getting on the board again. It's three already for the jet, but Ghost has other plants in behind. The Empress has been popped, and the K is coming back to give him the top of that he needs. And then he has to go for the brawl, and ah, oh, too many decisions to go for. Too many choices to look at, and Shinobi will find that. Final kill, 7-5 to five as we get into the next half. A very, very good round for both sides. A very good half for both sides, I would say. With NU having that slight lead, but MGS Spades now moving over to the attacking side with only two rounds of gap. Oh man, you have to commend Zirin here for those plays. You know, you gotta have that player who's just <laughs> willing to go in. I'm not uh, looking at that three kills, Nausicaa. It's, <laughs> it's the... In my heart, he has 11 if you added all the assists, because he just, he just goes oh, for it. Come yeah, on. That guy just Viper spit? I don't see it. I'm just gonna jump in there and I take that. I think that's off. the right call, honestly. Because you expect the Viper to be inside the pit all throughout, and yeah. someone needs to spot her as soon as possible. Even if you die in the field of combat, then you can just at least say, oh, the Viper was around in this area, and that cake will be deflated as soon as the chef is gone. So here we go at the Gendo. The spades moving over the to an A side take. They have the Sage like the other side, so we're gonna be expecting the wall setups to be the play of the game. But the thing is, they have a very strong post plan between the Firmstone as well as Sova. Molly's gonna be really interesting, Woo! but Humilio, he doesn't even sneak oh, on that. Gets in the face of Killers JM there. Zero there and Sirius doing it as well. Spike has been planted, a bit of flank here from the Viper. But Shinobi, he's the first in the world right now. And Sirius, <laughs> up top, drop top, gets rid of the Sage already. Oh man, and I was just gonna say, it would've been interesting to see now, or it will be interesting to see how Paradigm Esports is going to work with the Viper on defense as the only one with the smokes. That is going to be a flawless round, though, from the spades here on attacker's side. And I'm sure they're definitely hungry to get their own lead here in this round, or in this match, after this next half. You can expect there in TG. People call him 3G, what, in the chat? Yeah. Uh, I'll call him I'll call him LTE instead. And uh, probably as strong as connection as some, one of our sponsors, Globe. <laughs> just, uh, just goes to show, right, that he can really come up clutch in these tense situations. He can wrap up rounds pretty eagerly. He can get multiple multi-kills in these rounds. And now, the spades are one away from tying it all up. They have the gun advantage, they have the specters, and it would not be surprising whatsoever to see them go for the run it down. Toxic screen though in the way, and uh, here we oh, are. There it is. This, this is it, Nausicaa. <laughs> this is now where we see the power of Viper. Cross that wall, I dare you. Deploying Cross that way. wall, is it gonna happen? There's a, someone on the other side, we will try to flush him out, but Sirius gonna kill off the one. Here comes Cheesy and Ice Blue on the board though to answer back. Camellia gonna get that kill though, and Cheesy right now just able to spread it over again and again with that classic, but TG has other plans. It's 2v2, Aeonix with the flag, with a backstab, and now they catch out Zeriner on the high ground. The power of the Viper indeed is just gonna be putting you to the test. And Paradigm Esports will steal that away from MGS Spades. Oh man, what a round there on defense from Paradigm Esports. You see the screen go up, and all of a sudden Viper is behind you with the shorty. It's just, wow, it's very disorienting to play against Aeonix here on the defense. It's going to be interesting to see what else he has in store here for Paradigm Esports uh, for this half. Maybe C, it should be a full buy now coming in from a couple of the members from both sides. But for the first time, at least for the first three rounds so far, we are seeing a B push here uh, from the spades. We are seeing a screen. Wow, a very early screen here from Aeonix. He wants to do it again. Look at this. He wants to do it again and make these guys feel the rat of the poison. And this is such a... I'd say this is another... 
I, I like I like using a lot yeah. to search a name. It's another paradigm shift of playing the Viper, right? Because oh, oh TG though, oh he almost gets hit by the shot players. And there you go, surprise, Ooh. surprise, Aeonix on the other side, down, but beat. goes with the punish. <laughs> now I'll just mention this as quickly as possible. Toxic Rain usually for the post plant instead on the defending side. You use the poison cloud for the defense earlier on, but with that decay being so pesky now, we can see how much pressure that the Viper is able to apply. 3v3 though, gonna be the way to go. GC over up to the high ground. Looking to drop on down and Ziriner, he gets a bit of a taste of his own medicine remaining. there. He's gonna fall and Cheesy is just able to be the melting pot of culture, the melting pot of enjoyment and able to melt down the opposition time and time again. Looking pretty nice here for NEU as they are gonna be getting this round away from Thanks. the speeds again. Six to nine gonna be the scoreline and Paradigm Esports another chance to pull on away. Yeah, looking good, looking good so far. Uh, it looked a bit scary uh, there for a bit when, of course, Aeonix hiding in the cubby with that toxic screen and excited to see uh, what else this guy is going to do with Viper here on Icebox. Uh, they did push B that time. Unfortunately, did not work. Now we're seeing a couple of buys come through. Ice Blue Mink going for the op. He is going to be holding A here. Let's see if he can get a couple of picks. Then we got uh, two Spectres and two Vandals as well uh, on the defense. But that should be a full buy all across the board for the Spades as they kind of split up once again here on the attack. Yeah, here we have it again. The spades now. Scatter shot approach, looking to find a few picks here and there and punish whatever Paradigm wants to bring to the table. But NEU, they've had other plans so far and they're happy to take these duels as much as possible. Jump peak! Almost gets hit there by Zero in there. Poison but surprise, skull. surprise, Tyrion's on the other side and it's just a solid, solid sandwich there against the Viper. One on the left, one on the right, push on to B side. Here they come, looking to play the default, clean up the defenders. Shinobi goes down and now the Spades, they have control of the west side of the map. Man, Aeonix aggression might have bit him in the butt there. No toxic screen this time as we go for this Next part, the GC gonna throw out the ult there, but isn't able to take anyone out. Serious, defending this angle here, and it is a five v three, so it's gonna be rough now uh, for Paradigm Esports. Paradigm Esports, at the very least, uh, they do have an idea that there might be people flanking on the round. But as I say that, Camellia comes out from the colors and does get rid of Koisi M. Serious in the meantime with another kill, three in a row, looking for the quad and us. Flawless and as clean as can be here for the MGA Spades. When they get the round back versus NEU, it's just so commanding and it does make it so that NEU, where's your streak? Where's your momentum? Gone immediately because the Spades are here to play. Yeah, just like that, it's 7-9 on the score here in our first game of this best of three uh, between these two teams. Looking at the buys, a couple of rifles, but not don't think anyone can buy uh, other than these three members we've got here. So they might just opt for a couple of other options. Yep, we see one Spectre come through. Let's see what the setup is this time. Ice Blue Mink actually pushing forward here with the Spectre. Gonna see if he can get some early pick. Sirius doesn't see this. He's actually gonna get taken down quite oh, early. No. Oh no. Two very huge early picks here for Ice Blue Mink. And now there's only three members left. Shinobi pushing down, in there. Spawn. And the spike ball is just only two members left last here from the standing. side of the space. One left. Ghost going for a last stand. And that the VAR is not going to be enough to mitigate that damage. 7 to 10, double digits now for NEU. And for the Spades, I, I feel like they should have seen that coming because they played that playstyle a while ago. They played that aggressive <laughs> defense to change up the pace. And they, they didn't suddenly expect it now. Did did they not expect that their, their opponent wouldn't do the same thing, especially with the likes of Ice and Blue Ming? Apparently not, because someone was a little busy with the drone, and that was the downfall of Zeriner at the end of that. But not counting out any of these teams as of yet. We still got the spades ready to fight back as the Blade Storm is available here for Sirius. Cheesy though, already going for the dart, going for the bounces. Trying to get a bit of intel on the other side of blue as here we go with the speed. Ice Blue Mink though, gonna be back on away for the time being. Ghost ready with the Leer, throws it down. It seems like the blades are unleashed here for the side of the spades. The wall already used by Aeonix there on B, so they won't be able to use it here if MGS Spades do try to commit for an A push. Seems like they will. They're slowly moving in here now. They're looking for a pick. He's gonna back off a bit. No kills just yet, and I think no one's taking damage just yet as well. We do have Viper Spit though on the defending side here from NEU. Slowly just firing some shots, hoping to land maybe a couple of headshots or a pick here and there. 
Oh, and we see Ashley, Papua University, moving over to B instead. Yeah. Familias is making his own kind of beat. The stim drone giving him that vibe check just to enjoy his taps. But the thing is, Aeonix had an idea people are coming and the Viper Spit is basically his way of setting the table on B site. Now come in, Dinner Guest, says the Viper. And we'll see what kind of meal we can get inside that pit. Left. For now, this is a play just getting in the way again and GC on the other really side. Like NEU playing with the Viper very, very exceptionally. You can see how much work they've really put into, into this one. Oh. Sirius and V-Time with a kill onto the Sova. It's 4v4 oh, wow. oh, and MGS Spades. They'll have to force things out here, Nausicaa. A couple of seconds left here, 10 seconds to go. The ult is used there by the Brimstone team. She's planting. Let's see if they can make this one work. They definitely will make it in time. And now it's going to be about the Rita Camilleo. Gets one on JM. And now only two members left here on the defense. Aeonix gets one. There goes the res there on to Ghost to make it a 4v2. Going to be tough here on the retake. But let's see if the Viper can make use of her pit. Can try and climb up here or something. I don't know what he's planned here, but he's going to try have to go and do something soon. They heard that, and that's heavy. Surprise, surprise! Sirius right beside them. One HP and a dream doesn't care about the decay. Because if you can get the leg up on your opponent, give them the jump scare that you wanted to give in the first place, then that is just what you need to get that takedown. What a great showing, though, from the spades, especially Sirius. 24 kills to his name, and the Battle of the Jet raises on. It's like Ice Blue Mink with 19, very commendable. But this is Sirius' day, this is Sirius' show, and right now he's becoming as serious as this can be, be to really bring his team back from the brink. Will it be enough, though? That'll be the question, because NEU is still up by two. And here we go again with a cheeky place. Ice Blue Mink on the other side. Does he have the operator? That'll be the question, because. He has to be careful now. There we go with the dock screen getting in the way. And Kui's JM getting the detain online after orb control is given to them by MGS Fades. Yeah, we got a couple of alts here on the defense. So this could be really useful to secure an even bigger lead here against the Spades. Definitely. Oh, Ice Blue Mink actually does have the op here. But he doesn't spot Sirius. Sirius just patiently waiting, seeing if his members, the other members of the team, can get a pick here on a site. A couple of shots fired, actually. Now the two Jets get a face off. It's up versus the Vandal here. While the other members are still waiting to here. see if A is a good idea or if they will rotate. Seems like they are going to go for the rotate here. Ice Blue Mink going to miss that first off shot. Going to find Sirius. Ooh, takes so much damage. And Sirius doesn't take any damage at all. Oh my god, Sirius, he found the shot there, and now Ice Blue Mink needs the heal. Because of that back, though, Sirius is able to take point and take command of this B-side for the rest of the team. But the Yonix has other plans. It's going to be finally Ice Blue Mink getting rid of Sirius, but TG left. with the refrag on the Ice Blue Mink, making it 3v3 from the high ground. The Koi's GM surprises TG, giving TC the opportunity to get that kill. Now Lockdown going to be into play. Zero there with a few darts here and there. And the Dome of Doom getting in the way. Here we go with a bit oh, more of that yes. zone, though. Time to get away, time to run on back as here comes Ghost and an incredible call for Ghost to pop the Empress and stay on inside the dome. But GC, he still gets the kill. Now it's all up to zero there, but it's not gonna happen. The Sova able to outmuscle the Reina and the Sova on the other side. And even though MGS Fades went for that gamble, played it smart, they still lost to the odds and still lost that round to Paradigm Esports. Young man. That was a huge round there for Paradigm Esports and those alts definitely instrumental in helping them win that one out. It was a really good effort there from Ghost, but man, when that lockdown lands at that point in the game, it's just, it's really hard uh, at that point. Either push and try to take out that alt or it's going to be over for that round. And now it's 8 to 11 here on the score. Paradigm Esports, again, keeping up the lead in spades. They're really going to have to keep uh, rather really try to show up this next few rounds or in two rounds it's going to be over as we move on to the next game in this best of three. Such an intellectual matchup. You can see the small nuances that are being brought by both the Spades and the Paradigm Esports Squadron. But right now, it's a big gun there making a big impact and TG is down for the count thanks to Ice Blue Mink. Good start here for NEU. They're one away from getting to that match point situation. And the Spades, they're stacking heavily on the A side. Seems like they're forcing out whatever they can here to try and fight back. Zero in the meantime with the Aldrone now. Killjoy setup. It's just so pesky there. The alarm but saying hello. The nanosaurs are being bounced around. There we go with darts even. And there's just no going out the site here, Nausicaa. 
what can MTS Spades do as they are just caught in the middle right now. And Koi GM with a free kill off the ghost going for another one. It's three. That's the lineup is real. Camellia runs into the sidelines there, trying to dodge the Hunter's Fury. It's all up to Sirius now. And can he do it? He gets the first oh. kill on the Sova though. And oh, he avoids the off shot even. Oh man, that's Spectre doing the work there on defense on A site. Let's see what Sirius can do with 7 HP. Gets a headshot. Ah, I don't want to doubt this guy, you know, it is serious. Stop fragging right now with 7 yeah, HP and the battle. Let's see what he can do. Bomb though so is there I think. on Nest. No, actually not there on Nest. On the first floor. First oh, taken no. out. Oh, actually finds the shot there. But still, that is going to be going to Paradigm Esports. And they are one round away from securing the first game. That was such a big call though from Sirius. Killing the Killjoy immediately as soon as the turret sets up prevents that turret from getting the takedown on them because he had such a low HP state. But look at this. The Hunter's Fury gets the on Camellia. He just panics. He's like, I'm panicking. Let me out. Let me out. I cannot handle this right now. And he just walks into that Spectre spraying down his teammates. So three in a row. A little bit of an opportunity being given there to Paradigm and they will take it. And just a shutdown on to Sirius even to add a little bit more. If it's all 1v1, I think Sirius could have actually gotten that round, but a great call there to double up just in case, peek with the turret first, and lead to them getting the win. Ooh. And this operator unanswered right now, Nausicaa. A while ago, sure, it did drop, but with Ice Blue Mick now finally hitting his shots, you can see that the, uh, the opponents, that MGS Spades, are meeting their maker and uh, being told to tell God to be like, Ice Blue Mick sent me. Ice Blue Mick sent me. Oh man, it's just overkill at this point. You have the toxic screen and the op. Honestly, that's really just overkill. It's going to be so hard here for Mako University to push up here on B. Gets spotted there, Ice Blue Mink, but he's unafraid. Still holding this angle here. Meanwhile, Kumileo gets a kill there onto Shinobi. It's a 4v4 to even things out. There's still a chance here for the spades. Slowly will push in, but Ice Blue Mink finds one. Going to hold this angle still as the three remaining members try and push in. Only the ult oh, no. from the jet. Ice Blue Mink finds another onto TG. He's already got three so far. Are they just gonna give him peace at this point? He goes for the knives. Oh, but Aeonix is gonna take that last one. And it is gonna be Paradigm Esports winning the first game of this best of three. Flick on up to go on high. What a crazy shot there at the very end from Ice Blue Mink. You know, I was about to say that it seems like Ice Blue Mink can hit absolutely everyone except Sirius. And then the way he just hits the shot onto the jet. Styling and uh, making a mad. What a great play there from the side of Paradigm Esports. And they will take map number one, take away the map pick of the MG Spade Squadron. And this is huge because the, the top part really for Division B has put in the work so far. They made it to this station for good reason. They're the top of the upper bracket. They've only dropped a single map during their journeys. And overall, it's been such a strong game. But we saw it from the get-go. It can still go either way. MGS Spades, a little no is here and there. Reckless Band of Zero in there. Unfortunately, didn't capitalize into kills, but it was quite a treat and it helped out the team. You could see also some of the nuances that Ghost did there to use the Empress to avoid things like lockdown. But just the Viper making such a big difference, I'd say, as well as the Jets of Ice Blooming stepping it up the same way Sirius did. Sure, the Duelists put in the work, but it felt like there were a lot more tools at the disposal of, at the disposal rather of Paradigm Esports in that match, and they used it to such a good degree. They really did. That was, I mean, a good portion though of that game was pretty much back and forth, you know, from our teams. I mean, in the end, uh, NEU did win that one out, but you definitely cannot count out uh, the spades as we move on into our next game. But we will be taking a short break in just a bit. We are going to be your casters for the next game as well. So we'll see you guys in just, uh, in just a bit. Uh, so don't go away.
Dear Mother, Light of the Home. Dad. Hey, baby.